Today I'm going to be performing a respiratory exam on Craig. I've developed this assessment to be appropriate in the pre-hospital setting. A more comprehensive exam may be performed in hospital or by a GP. The pre-hospital assessment is constrained by time, resources and a demand for prompt treatment and transport of higher acuity patients. Before I begin my assessment, I'm going to perform a brief primary survey. To do this, I'm going to introduce myself to the patient and assess his responsiveness, ability to talk, breathe and maintain his own airway. I'm also going to note any signs of illness in the patient's environment, such as home oxygen, medications or walking sticks and frames. Hi there Craig, my name is Kirsten, I'm a primary medical student from AUT. Can you please confirm your age and date of birth for me? Age 23, born April 8th, 1993. Perfect. Alright, so what I'd like to do today with your consent is perform a respiratory exam. This is going to involve taking the pulses from your wrist, looking at your hands, face and examining your chest. Is that okay with you? Yes, cool. Perfect. A good next step in the primary assessment is taking the patient's radial pulses. Is it alright if I take the pulses from your wrist? Mm -hmm. Whilst doing this, noting the rate and regularity of these. Also note the warmth of the patient's hands. Cold hands indicate peripheral vasoconstriction and poor perfusion. A capillary recall time is also helpful in assessing this. Can I please um, just pinch your nail again here? Perfect. And that's within the normal range of two seconds. Note the colour of the patient's hands, nail beds, and more centrally their mouth and nose. Abnormal colouring from pallor to cyanosis indicates poor circulation and oxygenation of the tissues. This can be a sign of imminent respiratory arrest or hypoxic coma. The focused respiratory assessment can now begin. The first stage of this involves looking at the patient's general appearance and noting any hallmarks of respiratory distress. Indications of respiratory distress include nasal flaring, diaphoresis and a distressed appearance. Count the patient's rate of respirations. An increased rate of respiration often indicates some degree of respiratory distress. Irregular respirations can indicate chronic pulmonary edema. Next, take a note of the patient's ability to speak. Craig, can you please count out loud to 10 for me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Increased work of breathing or respiration rates often greatly limits a patient's ability to talk. The patient who can speak full sentences is usually status 4, while the patient who can speak 0 to 3 words per breath is usually status 1. Note the positioning of the patient and use of any accessory muscles in breathing. The short of breath patient will typically be sat upright and may be leant forward in the tripod position. Commonly used muscles with increased work of breathing are the muscles of the shoulders and neck. Next note whether or not the patient is breathing using pursed lips. In severe exacerbations of cord or asthma, breathing through pursed lips may occur. This is known as intrinsic or autopeak and it increases the pressure in the alveoli at the end of expiration. This increases alveolar surface area available for gas exchange, decreases airway resistance and decreases the work of breathing of the patient. The degree of the patient's um, respiratory distress generally indicates the status code they should be assigned. A patient with severe respiratory distress should be assigned status 1, with moderate respiratory distress status 2 and with mild respiratory distress status 3. This is due to the potential and unlikely threats to life. Next, they ask if you can examine the patient's torso. To do this, they need to remove their shirt. Craig, is it alright if you take off your shirt so I can examine your chest? Thank you. Note the shape of the patient's chest. A normal chest is wider than it is deep, with nil ambiguous changes in depth at the ribs, intercostals or sternum. A chest with increased diameter from front to back is known as barrel chest. This is normal in infancy and occurs with ageing or in patients with cord or lung hyperinflation. Next, assess chest wall expansion by placing your hands on the patient's chest with your fingers parallel to the ribs. Craig, is it alright if I um, place my hands on your chest while you breathe? Perfect. Ask the patient to take a deep breath and assess the symmetry of chest expansion. Take a deep breath for me. And out. Perfect. Thank you. Spin around, swing to the other side. And again, deep breath. And out. Perfect. Any asymmetry or delay in chest expansion may indicate 
uh, some unilateral disease of the pleural space. Next, observe for any retraction of the interspaces. Retraction of the intercostal muscles occurs in acutely short of breath patients due to the negative intrathoracic pressure drawing the soft intercostal muscles inwards with the pressure gradient. It can often be seen in status one or two respiratory patients who haven't yet reached the point of exhaustion. Next, assess the abdominal movement during respiration. Inward movement during inspiration and outward movement during expiration is abnormal. This can be caused in patients with chronic airway obstruction due to the distortion and depression of the diaphragm. Assessment of this can be enhanced by placing a hand on the patient's diaphragm while they abdomen while they breathe. Can I place my hand on your abdomen? Abnormally for me. Normal lung sounds transmit a palpable vibration through the patient's chest known as phrymethys. To palpate this, place the ulnar aspects of both hands on the patient's chest and palpate from the apex to the base of the lungs. Palpate the lateral lung fields by placing your hands laterally to the patient's nipples. Great, can I please um, put my hands on your back? Just turn around for me. Great, okay. Can you please repeat the phrase 99? 99. 99. 99. 99. Ninety-nine. Perfect. Can I do the same on the front? All right. And begin. Ninety-nine. 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 Any asymmetry in phrymatous palpation can indicate lung or pleural consolidation. An important aspect of the respiratory exam is percussion. A resonant sound can be heard when percussing healthy lung tissue or air-filled spaces. A dull note is produced when percussing fluid or tissue-filled spaces as a pneumonia or pleural effusion. A hyperresonant note is produced when percussing an area with air trapping such as a pneumothorax or emphysema. And when percussing, ask the patient to hold their shoulders separating the scapula widening the percussion field. Is it alright if you just hold your shoulders for me? Alright, can you turn around so I can look at your back? Okay. Percuss the alley between the scapula and the vertebral column. Do this in a ladder formation, moving across the chest each time. Move down to interspaces between sets. Can I please do the same on the front, Craig? Mm -hmm. Great, and you can just remember to hand for that. Thank you. The final step of my respiratory assessment is auscultation. When auscultating, place the diaphragm of your stethoscope on the patient's chest to listen to the breath sounds. It can be helpful to ask the patient to breathe deeply and through their mouth during this time. Okay, Craig, so I'd like to have a listen to your chest. If you can breathe through your mouth, okay, and take some nice deep breaths for me, that would be great. Okay, deep breaths for me. Can I do the same on the back?
Perfect, thank you. Crackles or crepitations occur in association with fluid accumulation in alveolar or interstitial spaces. Wheezes occur in association with bronchoconstriction as is present in asthma or cord. A patient who is acutely short of breath and a high status may not actually have a wheeze if they aren't moving any air. This is a hallmark of the status one respiratory patient who needs to be treated aggressively. We'll continue around that break. Thank you. Upper airway obstructions are associated with strider. Strider is best auscultated by placing the diaphragm of your stethoscope directly on the trachea. Is it right if I place my stethoscope on your throat? Breathe in with me. As with respiratory distress, the degree of the strider indicates the status code the patient should be assigned. A patient with severe strider is status 1 and with mild strider is status 3. Assess the patient for bronchophony by asking them to repeat the phrase 99 whilst auscultating the chest. Changes in the sound transmitted indicates airless lung tissue. Is it alright if I have a quick auscultation in the back again? Yeah. Just repeat 99 for me. 99. Assess the patient for egophony by asking them to make an E sound whilst auscultating. A change of an E to an A sound indicates low bar consolidation as is present in pneumonia. This is a useful tool of assessment as egophony in a patient with a cough and fever more than triples the likelihood of the patient having pneumonia. So Craig, this time when I have a listen, can you just make an E sound? It's alright to stop to breathe, okay? <laughs> found anything abnormal in my respiratory assessment of Craig, so I'm going to assign him a status 4 with uh, no likely threat to life. Oh, oh my god. Oh. 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 Oh my god. What happened? Oh. oh my god. I fucked it up a little bit, but I don't no, care. No, you didn't. I don't care anymore. Oh my god. Anything you can just put a oh text on. Oh my god. 